everybody, call me Felix and many of my food adventures thus far in the Philippines have revolved around finding that perfect lechon. Whether finding it in Cebu or making it ourselves here in Ilocos Norte but never quite reaching porky perfection. You can find all those past videos in my playlist Lechon Diaries Philippines on the far right hand corner. In this video, we're attempting to replicate an ambitious lechon recipe created by the lechon diva of Pepita's Kitchen a truffle and foie gras stuffed roast suckling pig. The Lechon Diva is world famous for creating different gastronomic interpretations of roast suckling pig. But the one recipe that grabbed me combines two of my favorite umami loaded ingredients, black truffles and foie gras. As you'd expect, finding a recipe to base our food experiments was like finding a needle in a haystack. So we asked advice from friends of friends who are chefs, to give us some tips on our ambitious recipe and we had to use plenty of intuition for how to cook the stuffing and pig perfectly. There were a lot of positives and lessons learned from our truffle and foie gras stuffed roast suckling pig and used arborio rice and parmesan cheese to give us a risotto-like consistency and we roasted our lechon over charcoal with a bamboo spit holding our stuffed pig all together. Was our recipe worth all the effort and even with a few things to be improved upon was our truffle and foie gras lechon the best roast pig I've ever had? Keep watching to find out. All right, Warren, so our first couple of steps <laughs> to replicating the famous truffle foie gras uh, stuff Here suckling is. pig that we're going to roast. We're gonna do some searing of foie gras and we're gonna make some half cooked risotto. So, Mike, there aren't many recipes out there, so we're really winging it. But what I believe is that you have to sear the foie gras on both sides, but make sure it's half cooked. Yeah. Risotto. Well, it's not really risotto, but it the yeah, right the truffle rice. I'll take that. Yep. You're gonna sear it. Okay. So that goes in another pan. Yes. Okay. Goes in another pan. This is how many do we need? Three. Um, three, three and three quarter cups. Three and three quarter cups. Okay. Quarter mm -hmm. cup. Okay. All right, guys. So this is the foie gras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that you're gonna see. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to make a sort of risotto, although it's not really risotto because we're kind of we're lacking white wine. Mm. Where's the white wine? Where's the white wine? Indeed. So, um, we're basically making a truffle rice risotto sort of hybrid for this suckling pig, which comes out at about seven kilograms. So seven kilograms. I got an approximation from somebody that I was talking to about this recipe. They said, all right, put 385 to 400 grams of tr black truffle and 385 to 400 grams of foie gras. Oh, uh, you gotta be quick. Oh, you gonna put them all in there? No, only the two of the egg. Okay. Ah! So it's gotta be hotter in first. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 put it down with this thing. Salt and pepper. Okay. You should have done that beforehand, Warren. <laughs> So what you want to get is a nice sear up there on both sides. So then you can set that aside for the suckling pig. Ooh, it's smelling buttery. Getting that sear. It should brown a little bit more. Gosh, Warren's just using seeds and stuff. This is this is supposed to be high brow and yet we're using <laughs> Oh, it's a whatever, Warren. Let's just roll with it. It doesn't matter. It'll taste delicious anyway. Yeah. Yeah. This is your first time cooking foie gras, right, Warren? And this, and this is my first time seeing foie gras too. So. What? You had foie gras at Jiao too. Remember that? No, you don't. Remember no, when I we don't. had that A5 Wagyu steak? That was when we had foie gras too. Oh, Warren, you have I little it memory. Was a liver of it is a liver. A foie gras is a liver. It's just a very fat, abscessed liver. Ah, uh, duck livers, all right? Yes. Oh, or it could be goose liver. So this is, I think this is duck liver. Yeah. Yeah. Not goose liver. Smelling glorious already. We gotta make sure not to overcook these so that we can put them in our piggy over here. Piggy. Now, I didn't get any footage of this suckling pig, and uh, as far as it was live a few hours ago, everyone. Uh, yeah. It tried to escape. It kind of knew where it was going. But, yeah. 
She's too cute. <sighs> well, that's looking good. That's this part here, Warren, is looking good. This one? Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of sear you want. All right. Smelling delicious. Smelling buttery. Smelling ducky, too. <laughs> so I'm expecting this when you roast it with the suckling pig. This is going to start melting oh. into that rice. <laughs> wow. It's going to be super decadent, that rice. And especially oh, so that pork fat. The and, pork then the, and then that suckling pig fat from within will flavor the rice with even more unctuousness. And then the aromatics, the truffle, the foie gras, mm. we're going to go back into that pig as, as far as the aroma goes. Oh. Aromatherapy for our piggy on its last little voyage. And here we are, we're making risotto in an Instapot, or something like it. And we're using arborio rice, which is typical for making risotto. Now risotto is the trickiest, one of the trickiest recipes that you could make because you have to keep stirring and stirring and stirring. Everything's about timing and getting it creamy and getting it al dente enough. It's one of the harder things to do, but um, I know the recipe calls for truffle rice. What that is, I don't know what the rice is, the type, but I'm just guessing. Why not just make it something that's like risotto? So, of course, we're using this as a saute, the saute mode of our Instapot. Yay. So, you guys remember, we're going to half cook the rice because... Half cooking the rice means that you're going to cook the rice completely in the inside the pig stuffed in there. Right, JP? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the chicken stock. Pretty mild. Yeah. Making the risotto in an Instapot and black truffle shavings. Shave, freshly shaven truffles. Yeah, it's got a sm like a mild, earthy smell, not like super punchy, garlicky, right? Yeah. That's the smark of a good truffle, by the way. That's a preferred black truffle that it doesn't get too, you know, strong. Just a nice, mild, earthy flavor. Sometimes there's a bit of cocoa notes going on over there. Yeah, it's smelling fantastic. But the white truffle is most expensive on the black. Um, the most expensive truffles I've encountered are called Perigord black truffles, oh. um, from France. And they're very, they're prized mainly because of their subtle flavor. It's not like in your face. Wow. That is smelling fantastic. Earthy. It only lacks the white wine, everybody. But that's okay. We're gonna substitute it for pork fat. Inside the inside the the I pig. Put like extra butter in there. I figured I don't know it's offset, but it smells buttery and cheesy to me. Hmm? Yeah, cause it has to be. It's gonna cook in the pig. Yeah. Clean it. Huh? Yeah. Oh, you? Oh, wait, should I interchange? With foie gras? Yeah. yeah. No, just put... No, 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 get it. Even if it breaks up? Yeah. I think it fits. The only thing is because we're spit roasting it, I wonder how, how, how it will hold together. It's okay. That flavor will be in there regardless. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, like, it's okay if it's melted. I'm just saying, like, the entire thing. Oh, yeah. Once again, everyone, I couldn't find a recipe on this, so we're winging it as we go. <laughs> Another thing we're doing is we're roasting this over charcoal on a bamboo spit. I wonder what kind of... That makes a difference. Who knows? Yeah, it's not gonna. That looks like plenty. 
Maybe we should make truffle risotto for ourselves. <laughs> I think we should add a little bit of liquid in this though. Because it's mm -hmm. half cooked. But do you think if we add the liquid it'll be whatever? You think we should just leave it like that and let it steam within its own? May steam na man sa loob nito, diba? May tubig na malalabas sa kanya. Well, it's gonna fall out, no? Not if you put a lot of twine in there. Foie gras? Oh, we need to put any more truffles. Yeah, we need to put more truffles in. We can't. There's no more space. Ah! Oh my gosh. It's like putting cocoa powder in there. What kind of sauce? What kind? Thousand pesos each ball. A thousand. It's like eleven hundred per one hundred grams. <laughs> That's uh, that one bag that we just put in there is eleven hundred. Yep. One thousand one hundred. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. So don't fall out, truffles. <laughs> is this um fruits or? It's a fungus. Yeah. Where you can think of it is a very fragrant expensive fungus. fragrant mushroom. So don't spill that any. Lives that lives underground. <laughs> so how many cups of rice did we put in? Like three and three quarter cup of arborio rice? Yes. Some parmesan cheese, yeah. Like eight, eight foie gras in there. Eight seared foie gras. And then, uh, nine yeah, nine tablespoons of black truffle oil, and we still have some to coat the outside of our pig with. <laughs> and then there even have some black truffle shavings that we made ourselves, shaved ourselves. Yeah. Might as well stick them on the pig, right? Yeah, we have 100 <laughs> grams. Of yeah, 100 grams of black truffle. So, the foie gras we use all of it, right, Warren? Yes, sir. Yeah. So 385 grams of foie gras went into this 7 kilogram suckling pig. Wow. <laughs> wow, it is done. Soy mo rin yan eh? Ha? Soy Malang, ay barot yung ang ni. It's wow. time to baste it. Ooh. Five o'clock on the dot. Here we go. Yeah, it does. It's the color. Anyway, it doesn't really taste if you put the soy on there. Ronnie. Come here, Sinai. Hey. Let me see that. I don't cool it, huh? Yeah, it's just for color. Looking so tan right now. Mm hmm. So it has that nice shine. Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, the oh. mom. Oh. <laughs> you going into the races, Warren? <laughs> Ooh la la! <laughs> Look at that concoction! This is our truffle oil. With, well, it's truffle flavored olive oil, so we just get it right, right? Yeah. But we added black truffle to it, fresh mm -hmm. black truffles, oh. and some salt. And if you smell it... My god, it's so fragrant. It's like in your... In your face. It's not really in your face. It's very mellow, earthy, but it's strong. Mm. If that makes any sense. It doesn't smell garlic. It just smells like a 
Nice earthiness. The way I would describe that. <laughs> hmm. Oh my god, it smells so good. Ooh, pretty. Look at that truffle oil. That's not just synthetic truffle oil, there's some freshly shaved truffle. Mmm. <laughs> it's like Warren playing like an off-key oboe while he's turning this <laughs> suckling pig. Ooh, look at the brown. Meets more truffle oil! <laughs> now it's truffle oil! Yeah, dead. Hmm, I smell it. It's coming from inside. One hour? Come on over side. I think two. And hopefully that rice is getting cooked as well. Ooh, look at that. Normal ba yan na maraming oil na lumalabas sa kapag? Okay lang siya. Normal yan? Yeah, okay. Hindi yung nilagay natin na oil na... No, those are just the natural oils coming out. And it's also basting the whatever coating you put on it. Remember that rabbit lechon took forever to cook anyway? Like an hour? This thing might be faster. And it's like... Four times the size. <laughs> wow, look how brown that thing is. Is it burnt, Ronnie? No. <laughs> Why did that happen? You need more oil? So it doesn't burn? You should put more oil.
it's worse for wear on this side. <laughs> Basting the last of the truffle oil. So guys, the lesson, this story is... We haven't eaten it yet though. I mean, if you, if you become a bad boy, you go in the house. <laughs> you are a bad boy, Warren. I'm not. I'm a good person. Good personality. Good human. Some, some people say, Warren. <laughs> Eh. Never mind. Ah, it's so hot! Kita Truffle. It, sm it smells like truffle out of its ass. <laughs> oh my god, you're so <laughs> Mm. Mm. 
Wow. Oh, wow. Dang, that looks good. So we better take all this out before the crispiness of the rest of it gets out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. Oh, shit. I may wire for sure. I'll Oh, so foie gras still in there. Mm -hmm. Let's just do that. The flavor is really good. This needs a little more moisture. Is that a native? I can't wait to dig into the book. I, I think so. Ooh. Well, we had the oh my. Excuse me. Ooh. You know what my favorite part is? Cheek. That's the Careful your hands. Careful. Oh, there you, go. you ever had the pig brain? Pig brain is good. You can put it on salad. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. But the cheek is like the best part. Right, so that's it right there. Yeah. You ever had pork cheek? Mm, not really. It's basically like every cut of the pig all condensed into one. That's the best part. Pig's head's my favorite part, actually. That in the belly and the legs. Oh, shit. Here. Hmm. I want to try. Oh, oh yeah. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to try everything. Is this one Oh, it's hot. Hmm. I don't know. I think we were about right to cook it almost full. That is buttery. Mmm. Good? Mmm. Awesome. Hey, why don't we check the bread? Run. Let's see, I have anything in here. Mmm. Run. Now this one. Is this yeah. the cheek? Mmm. Don't cut it, right? There you go. Woohoo! Oh my god. Let's that part. Just mukbang it. Yeah, I know. Just mukbang it. <laughs> just, just take it all. Yo. Mmm. Hot now, Tony. Can you put on? Wow. That does not taste, uh... Does it taste what? It doesn't taste gamey. It's just so clean. Chris, the skin's a teensy bit chewy, but the crispiness is there. Yeah. Mm. Wow, look at that. Well, I'm good. You should probably try that part, especially because it's infused by the truffle. Yeah. This part. Mmm. Sorry, I'm <laughs> yeah, later. No, we'll have to go. Well, yeah, this pork cheek is really good. That would be a Mmm. Juicy. I think even in the pig's head, some of that... Some of that truffle sort of taste got in there. Really buttery. 
The pig body. The pig body. The pig Mm-hmm. I want to taste that. Taste that skin? Yeah. Yeah, that actual body. Mm-hmm. See if it absorbed it. Yeah. Mm. Well, that pork cheek really is like the most unctuous part. Like, that skin, that fat, good piece of meat there. Can you tell it's a bit, it's younger? Hmm? Can you tell it's a young one? Yeah, because this doesn't feel like... It, it, you know how pigs, when they go adult, there's a little bit of a barnyard taste? Yeah. Nice. You don't get this. I'm getting softer. Softer, a little creamier. And then, it's like everything that's good about lechon, yeah. but made cleaner. Hmm. They said it's usually gamier. I don't know, but the way this is cooked, then it's gamey. Truffle, mm -hmm. truffle got into the meat. Wow. Mm. This part right here. Yeah. We're inside. Not this. No. 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 Yeah. That part. Mmm. Gotta compliment this. And what this smells? It just smells like mushroomy, buttery. It doesn't smell like any type of lechon that I know of. I think what we gotta do, take some of that skin with it. Yeah, put it on there. Like a taco. <laughs> mm. 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 There's like loads of flavor in that. It is, right? Truffle, like more umami taste. And the skin. That is body. Almost perfect. Crack, almost perfect crackling. What are you thinking about this? Mm. It's burst mm. milk. Mm. And... <laughs> I really like the skin. <laughs> Juicy. It's, yeah, it's not gamey at all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, pig. Mm. Well, we did this pig well. Oh, we just gotta... I think our rice is a teensy bit, a little bit over al dente. Just need to redo our rice a little bit. But it infused all that flavor into the... Pig itself. They're really juicy and crispy. Okay, do I dare pronounce this? Dare announce this? You guys want to hear it? Sure. This might be the best pig ever. <laughs> it might be the best pig ever. It what do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Out of yeah. every lechon that I've tried in the Philippines, out of every one that we've tried ourselves. Even in this, Cebu? This, yeah, this is the one. Whoa. Guys, you heard that? <laughs> that truffle flavor. It's all over the map. <laughs> and it's so juicy. <laughs> and that that's so mm -hmm. clean. It's so clean, yeah. Hmm. Oh, oh God. Another <laughs> one? <laughs> that cracking, that crackling is heavenly. Yeah. It's crispy. Oh man. Ronnie, what's up? You did a good job. It's amazing, Ronnie. You did a great job, especially with the ingredients we got too. And Warren. Even and better. And Glenn. and Warren and Glenn. <laughs> oh, yeah, Glenn was the guy with the Squid Game mask. <laughs> what? And I'll tell you this. What? Um, we have more eleven piglets left. <laughs> <laughs> We have 11 piglets left. So what you gonna do about it? <laughs> what are we gonna do about it? Let him, let him grow older? <laughs> but I just wanna try this rice with this. Wow, this suckling pig is awesome. 
But, yeah. Gotta eat it with some truffle rice and some foie gras, don't we? Yeah. To complete the experience. Come on, dig in. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you gotta try it first. <laughs> I'm like... The flavor's up, is there. Just a little bit softer, it's right about there. Mm -hmm. It's really good. And guys, we didn't really know what to do as far as the doneness and then... It's almost there as far as the al dente. And like I told you, it's not really perfect risotto and it was never intended to be. But, ooh, blood sauce. Maybe add some more umami with the truffle. Hmm. Mm hmm. I'm gonna try it. How does it taste like? It, there's a little bit. Try to put some tabasco. It's clean, but it's got a little bit of like a a stringency, like a little sourness. Oh, that's because you put suka. Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> Goodness. <It's> good. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. Well, of course, we gotta try this with our rice. We're gonna recook it a little bit, make it softer. But it is packed full of truffle flavor. I mean, packed to the gills with truffle flavor. Yeah, it is. Mm. So I can, oh, I need that though. So we're gonna turn it back there and then we'll put some more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, back in a bit. Okay, here I've got some final thoughts on our suckling pig. Well, um, suckling pig itself is the biggest positive, I would say. Um, really love how suffused the truffle oil and the truffle flavor got seeped in through the, the meat on both sides. Really, really good. And that skin, pretty much well on point as to how crispy, crunchy you get. And all we added was soy sauce and some truffle oil. Lots of it, actually. There you go. A couple of things to note. One, make sure you don't salt the cavity of the pig. Because Ronnie did just that, I think. And our truffle rice wound up being a little too north of El Dente. Not quite um, the perfect El Dente. So we had to remix it a little bit. We didn't have any Parmesan cheese and white wine. And Parmesan would have made it saltier. So the bigger thing is it wound up salty. And we loaded this with so much truffle. So what we did was we added more cream. And then we added some regular, like, you know, jasmine rice. And mix it all up together. Kind of like a red beans and rice thing. And adding more creaminess kind of settles down that salt. Brings up that salt. The truffle flavor is still intact. Texturally, I mean, this is not exactly like picture perfect risotto. Or ideal. But, if you mix this together, as we did, after the fact, this winds up being pretty good. But not perfect, of course. So, don't salt the cavity of your... Don't salt the cavity of your suckling pig while trying to do his stuffed truff, truffle rice, black truffle rice. Because... We kind of have this extra saltiness we have to contend with. Mm. And then the other thing is our foie gras was a little bit north of overdone. There you go. A little overdone. I think that's Warren's bad on that one. Um, yeah. It still has that creaminess intact, but kind of that added little bit of rubbery texture there. So, my advice is if you're going to do foie gras and truffles rice in your lechon or in a suckling pig, make sure that your foie gras is about half cooked. Over high heat, over charcoal like we did in a little over an hour, let's say an hour or ten minutes. Um... Our truffle rice, our arboreal rice, wasn't quite el dente. I mean, again, a little too hard for an el dente. 
And then the foie gras, a little bit overdone. So just half cook it, the foie gras. And then with the rice, I think you'll want to get it close to cooked or add it basically. If you're doing over high heat or charcoal like we did. But the flavors are awesome though. It was a little too awesome because of the salt. So we toned that down, added more cream. It's tasting pretty good. Tasting pretty good. And that the chun, um, that, I mean, it is awesome. It's basically, you know, the best of lechon, except there's no gaminess. You know, it's not, ex there's no excess fat there. The skin is really crisp. Parts of it feel creamy. It accentuates that, and it absorbs all that truffle um, essence. And so would I do this recipe again? Definitely. Um, if you have the means to do so, do so. But, again, take a tip from me. If you do it, cook your rice about, especially if it's arboreal rice, cook it about three quarters, maybe 80% done, and then finish it off stuffed in the lechon. And then the foie gras, do it at half. Just get that sear on both sides and that's it. Be done with it. Um, it did not melt, which was kind of a bummer. It rather, it rather retained its shape in the rice. So. Learned those little mistakes from us, but we wound up with an awesome product. Um, just had to water down the truffle rice a little bit with some extra cream. And then I think we would definitely do this again, if given the chance. And so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and better yet, subscribe for more of our food and travel adventures. Um, we ditched the instant noodle thing for some funnel cakes because we're selling them. So you might see us do more funnel cakes in the future. And so until the next time, keep cool, but care. Remember, the empire never ended.